The material for a novel is very often like tinder in your mind and in your heart, waiting for a spark to be thrown onto it. Sometimes you wait for years for that definite spark that starts the blaze. The Illuminations uh, is my fifth novel and it's set in the present day. Um, it really tells the story of an elderly lady, Anne Quirk, who lives in an assisted housing complex in Scotland and she's been affected by dementia and she's beginning to lose her memory. But at the same time as she's losing her memory, her past seems to be coming uh, into life for her. It seems to be returning. And at the same time, uh, there's another return, um, and that's her beloved grandson, Luke, who's been fighting in Afghanistan. And we see him there initially um, over a series of months, and then he comes back and they make a journey together to see the illuminations in Blackpool, and really to confront uh, their sense of the past and their sense of reality that they've both been living through. The inspiration for the book really came from uh, a now slightly forgotten photographer called Margaret Watkins, this woman who'd been born in quite a middle class artistic family uh, in Hamilton, Ontario in Canada and had had a good education and a great start in life and had become a very significant original modernist photographer um, in the jazz era, had gone to New York, she was on her way to being a Diana Arbus or a Georgia O'Keeffe. But instead, she came back to Scotland on a family mission to look after some old aunts and never returned. I grew up among a lot of women who did have talent and who had a sense of ambition, but they were often drawn back into silence, back into domestic duty, uh, childcare, and somehow their talent, although not being snuffed out, was sl slightly occluded. And that had been in my mind for a long time, that I wanted to write a story that would somehow draw that out. And Margaret Watkins, when I discovered her pictures, I saw that that was the occasion. That would give me a model. It's very often the way it works in a novel is that you have uh, a few suggestions from reality, from the real world, and they lock on like proteins to material that's inside you, that's in your imagination. Luke, the army captain in the book, he sort of lived very naturally for me. I mean, I knew that guy. Um, there was a lot of his own childhood, my own childhood in him. I felt I was excavating my own past and slinging into Afghanistan. I, and I went to Afghanistan and worked on the ground there to, to try and get it right. Uh, just had to understand, you know, the light at certain times of the day and the army routines. But I started to see my own battalion from the book in that terrain, in that heat, in a perspective specific mission uh, started to become clear to me. Um, you're always moving between the real and the imaginary as a novelist. I felt that what I didn't know at all and had to find was uh, the sense of the conflict from the other side. So going to Afghanistan was as much about that. And I spent time with um, people who were affected on the ground by the battle. Uh, villagers, people who um, considered themselves to be victimised by the coalition forces there. That was important to get. And some children, in fact some child jihadists, spoke to me um, in private in the, with a translator and they gave me an incredible sense of what the world seems like from their point of view. Being with those children uh, in those dust bowls in Afghanistan in the middle of that tremendous heat gave me, if you like, the atmosphere um, of those villages. I mean, the wedding scene in the novel couldn't have been written, um, you know, where, where an atrocity happens in a small village um, in Hellman. That couldn't have happened had I not spent time with those children. I just couldn't have populated that scene the way I did in the end. Over time, what I discovered was that this was a book about the nature of reality now, the nature of uh, the actual versus the imaginary. And it's not accidental that the main character, Anne Quirk, is a photographer. Photographers deal in the whole time between appearances and the imagination. How do you frame reality? Um, how do you uh, process reality? All terms from photography, you know, 
It's a book about memory and love and loss. And memory isn't just a series of photographs stuffed in a drawer. Um, you remake your past every day. And I wanted the book to show how uh, characters were in a constant state of imagining and rebuilding and remaking their past. In a modern context, I think we live in a world of images and reporting, and especially now with social media, that reality sort of batters at us constantly, but to what extent is it real? To what, extent, to what extent is it reality? You know, are people on Facebook living a life and describing it, or are they making it up? These questions interest me. They interest me as an essayist as much as a novelist. So when it comes to a book like The Illuminations, it's always going to be at some level... Um, an attempt to get a hold of what we mean by our experience. When an elderly lady who's losing her memory talks about her experience, is she really talking about uh, a chain of events that actually happened to her? Or is she talking about some events that happened to her and some things that she wished had happened to her, thrown in with things that never happened? And uh, people protect their past, they protect the story that they wish was true. I remember growing up hearing women sometimes talk very well of men that I knew weren't good to them. And it stuck in my mind, you know, this attempt to rewrite the past as we think of it. Well, we all do that to some extent, and I think modern society and technology invites us to do that even more, to manufacture our lives as opposed to just live them. That's a big question for a novelist and for a reader, and I think that it would be daft of a contemporary novelist not to take an interest in that.